All right, honors chemistry people, we are going to start putting the patterns of the electron dot pictures that we created while we were doing the orbital and the electron configurations into the pattern. So I want you to scroll back up to the top of where we started to put in all of these orbital notations and electron configurations. And we're going to start grabbing the Lewis dot pictures. So I want you to look at this column for the Lewis dot pictures, okay? So helium, if we look there, we've got one dot. So when we look at helium, I'm gonna change my pen to make it a little bit thicker to make the dots a little, and I'm gonna make it brighter too. So let's do a brighter color. Let's do red and let's do a relatively large dot. Okay, helium, I had one dot, so I'm gonna put one dot there. Uh, when I look at helium, I had two, so I'm gonna put two dots here. Lithium, I have one dot. Oh, it looks like it moved. Beryllium, I have two. And we're just gonna keep on doing that until we fill this in. So take a minute, do this, pause. I'm gonna just fill things in. Okay, so hopefully you're back. So for boron, you should have had three dots. Carbon, four dots. Nitrogen, five dots. Oxygen, six dots. Fluorine, seven dots. Nitrogen, or not nitrogen, neon, eight dots. Okay, how are you doing so far? Sodium, you should have one. Magnesium, two. Aluminum, three. Silicon, four. Phosphorus, five. Sulfur, six. Oops, that didn't, let's erase that. That dot is way too big. Six, actually, chlorine, seven, and argon, eight. I'm going to change that on the sulfur to be more in line. Okay, potassium, one, calcium, two, gallium, three. Germanium, four. Arsenic, five. Selenium, you should have six. And then bromine, sorry, you should have seven. And krypton, eight. Okay, is that what you got? So hopefully while you were filling this in, you noticed a pattern. You noticed that hmm, on this first column, I have one valence electron. On the second column, I have two valence electrons. So we're gonna put this into practice here, okay? So let's scroll back down where we were if it will let me scroll and it doesn't want to let me scroll <sighs> okay so our question here is what do you realize or notice about the elements in the same group? Remember, groups are our columns. The elements in the same group all have the same number of valence electrons. So elements in the same group have 
the same number of valence electrons. Okay. It's almost like they thought about putting the period, period to get table together in terms of patterns, huh? Okay, let's scroll down to the next question. Can I use this to predict the dot structures for the following elements? So let's get our periodic table out. And if I get into the honors chemistry folder and I grab our periodic table, we're going to look at barium really quick. Okay, so you're going to want a periodic table for this. Barium's right here. It is, it's in the second column. Okay. So if it's in the second column, we would expect it to have, let's see, two valence electrons. So for barium, we would put two valence electrons. Let's look at the next one. The next one is xenon. It's in the very last column. We would expect it to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Another little trick here is the ones place in the group number will tell you, except for the transition metals, it doesn't work for the transition metals. The ones place will tell you the number of valence electrons. So xenon will have eight. So when we put in xenons, we should have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I want you to go and predict what you would expect the rest of the dot structures for the rest of these to be, and we'll check back in a minute. Okay, you ready? All right, zirconium. Zirconium is actually in the middle of the D block. Did you notice that? And if you remember from our pattern on the D block, we only have the S orbitals showing up as valence electrons. So zirconium, we would expect to have two valence electrons, okay? Antimony has the two, the S electrons, two of them, and then it also has three P electrons. That will give us five total. So we will have the S electrons and the three P electrons in their individual orbitals, okay? Rubidium is in the very first column. So that means it has one valence electron. And bromine is in the second to last column. So that means it has seven valence electrons. Okay, how'd you do on predicting those? Okay, so as I said, when we were picking out the periodic table, the last digit in the group number for the main group elements tells you the number of valence electrons, okay? So we're gonna do some more practice here with our noble gas notation as well, okay? So I want to write the noble gas notation for barium. So let's look at barium. So if I look at barium, I'm right here. The noble gas right in front of barium is xenon. So I'm gonna put xenon in brackets. And then beyond xenon, I have six, and this is the S block, right? That's the S block. I have one, two, so I will have six S2. So when we write this, we will have xenon. And then beyond xenon, let's make sure I have the right thing. Yep, green. I will have 6s2, okay? Now, let's look at xenon itself. If I look at xenon, it is a noble gas, but I cannot use a noble gas to identify itself. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm going to use the noble gas in front of it. 
I'm going to use Krypton. So I have Krypton plus all of these electrons. So I have Krypton plus 5s2 and then 4d10. These are my 4d10 and then 5p6. Okay, so that's what we're going to put in there. So I will have Krypton plus 5s2, 4d10, and 5p6. Okay, I want you to go through and see if you can do the rest of these orbital notations, or not orbital notations, noble gas notations, using your periodic table, just using it as a guide. Okay, stop the video. Okay, you ready to check? Okay, so zirconium. Zirconium, the noble gas in front of it from the period before is krypton. So we're gonna start with krypton and then beyond krypton, we have 5s2 and we have 4d2. Okay, how'd you do on that? Okay, antimony, the noble gas in the period before antimony is krypton. We have 5s2, 4d10, and then antimony is 5p3. Okay, rubidium, the noble gas right in front of rubidium is also krypton, but rubidium is 5s1. There's only one electron there. And bromine, if I look at bromine, the noble gas in front of bromine is argon. And beyond argon, I have 4s2, 3d10, and I have 4s5, or sorry, 4p5, not 4s, 4 P5. So let me show you bromine, show you where I got that from. So let's go back to the periodic table just to give you another thing. So if I'm looking at bromine, let's switch colors here. If I'm looking at bromine. Oh, and it didn't switch colors. Bromine. The period, the noble gas in the period before is argon. So I have to add all these electrons to get to bromine. So I have to add the 4s2, I have to add the 3d10, those are the 3d10, and I have to have the 4p5, the five electrons in this p group right here to get to bromine. Okay, so Let's go back. And these are some review problems. Draw a picture of a 1s and 2s orbitals. Remember the orbitals are, s orbitals are spheres. So they're just spheres. P orbitals are kind of like the hourglass sign or the affinity shape. D or orbitals are kind of like four leaf clovers. Okay, and then F orbitals are even more involved. They're almost like jacks. I can't really draw it three dimensional. So both of these being S orbitals are gonna be spheres. The only difference is gonna be the size, the one S is going to be relatively small and the 2s is going to be larger so that it can fit over and around the 1s orbital so we think of them they layer like onions so 1s 2s 3s and so so on okay rutherford's gold foil we're going back a bit prove the existence of the nucleus okay we already drew the shapes of an S, okay? So an S is a sphere. A P is like an hourglass. 
actually more like that. A D orbital is kind of like a four leaf clover. And an F orbital, oh boy, they are really, really difficult. Okay, they are, so let's think about this. How does the current theory of an atom place atoms, electrons, and neutrons in the atom? Draw a picture. So the current theory is the electron cloud. The electron cloud. So when we think of an atom, we think of these orbitals, but remember these orbitals are just areas of high probability. So if I look at this, let's see. No, that's not what I want. If I look at this, I would really draw, it's not gonna be a solid thing. So I'm gonna use more like a highlighter thing. If I think of an atom, I will have that nucleus in the middle and then it will be surrounded by kind of this cloud thing. And we will have different orbitals picking out, peeking out like P orbitals. It doesn't necessarily need to be round, but we don't really know the exact location of the electron at any given time at all. Okay, we do know that the orbital shapes are somewhat like these, but we also know that the orbital shapes are really just high areas of probability. We don't necessarily, I actually want you to think of these orbital shapes as the electron. Okay. So these electrons are actually the shape because electrons are both waves and particles. These shapes just happen to be the wave functions of those electrons. And because they're moving at essentially the speed of light, they're almost the shape. Okay? So I want to just go over the periodic table with you for just a little bit and show you how I like to read it using the quantum numbers from the top all the way to the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this periodic table and I'm going to close it out. I'm not going to save all these markings that I made. And then I'm going to reopen it. Okay. So remember when we first looked at the periodic table, the very beginning of this quantum unit, and I told you to think of helium as being right here. Okay, I want you to still think of helium as being right there. So we're not going to put helium here. Okay. Now, if I go through and I highlight the blocks, we're going to highlight these blocks again. Okay. This very first block. Is our S block. Okay, so let's make this nice, fill this in. Okay, so that is our S block. So let's label it S block. So this is our S block. Does that not want to write? Okay. Then we're going to put in our P block. Okay. So our P block, let's get this to be light purple so it kind of matches. 
So our P block ends up being all of this. Okay. And if you want to fill this in nicely, you can. I don't know how nicely I'm going to have the patience to do this. Okay, that's our P block. Okay, our next block that we want to do is our D block. So let's do that in green. So our D block is this, right in through here. Okay, all of this is our P block. Okay, so let's label that. This is our P block. Or actually not our P block, it's our D block. Oh my gosh. My brain is not working. And then last but not least, down here, this is our F block. So let's get another color here. Let's get bright pink. This is our F block. And let's highlight this in pink. Okay, so by now you should realize that the quantum numbers go totally along with these blocks. Okay, and the M numbers in our quantum number go along with which orbitals in these blocks we are putting that electron in, or which orientation that electron in three-dimensional space is occupying. Okay, so here we go. Let's read the periodic table. Oh, good Lord, with what's going on, okay? So if I scroll down, and I start here, and I'm just gonna put in a black line as we go across. Let's just put in a black line. Let's make this thick so you can see it. Okay, so as I fill in electrons on the periodic table, I start with 1s1, 1s2, okay? That's this whole row. Then 2s1, 2s2, okay? 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 4, 5, and 6. There's our second level. 3s1, 3s2, 3p1, 3p2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Do you guys see the pattern here? Now remember, the D block is n minus 1, so it's one period behind. So this next row, 4s1, 4s2, 3d1, 3d2, 3d3, 3d4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Then we go back up to the P block, 4p1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is the next one, 5s1 and 2, 4d1, 4d2, 4d3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Then we're back up to 5p1, 5p2, 5p3, 5p4, 6, 
five, six. Okay. Then this one gets a little bit more complicated. 6s1, 6s2. Then remember the lanthanoids. So remember, these are n minus 2. So once we go from 6s1 and 6s2, this goes to 4f1, 4f2, 4f3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay? And then this 71 actually goes right here. So this is uh, 6s2, 4f14, and 3d1 right here. 3d2, not 3d, sorry, 5d2, 5d. So this is 3d1, th or not 3d. Oh my gosh, why do I keep saying 3d? This is 5d1, 5d2. 5d3, 5d4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's 5d. 6p1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Then we go back. 7s1, 7s2. Remember, this is n minus 2. This, so this is going to be 5f1, 5f2, 5f3, and so on. Until we hit 14. And then once we get here, this is going to be 6 D1, 62, 63, 64, 65, and so on. And then 7P1, 7P2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay? So if you know the periodic table and look at the levels on the periodic table, the quantum numbers are right there in front of you all the time. All right? Have a great day, and we'll talk about quantum numbers some more. We'll see you later. Bye.